we have here the case of Cards Global Marketing Network Inc. versus Mara, which deals with the liberal application of the appeal bond posting requirement. In March 2004, Miguel commenced his employment with Cards Global Marketing Network Inc. or Cards Global as Assistant General Manager. He alleged that Cards Global agreed to grant him 14th month bonus, a vehicle, and vehicle maintenance benefits. On July 6, 2006, Miguel instituted a complaint before the Office of the Labor Arbiter against Cards Global for non-payment of 14th month pay, refund of his expenditures for vehicle maintenance, damages, and attorney's fees. Cards Global denied Miguel's entitlement to said claims. With regard to the claim of 14th month pay, Cards Global asserted that the same was discretionary in nature and that such gratuity was never part of the regular compensation of its employees. On October 16, 2006, the Office of the Labor Arbiter ruled in favor of Miguel and ordered not only the payment of 14th month pay benefit but also the refund of car maintenance costs. Cards Global appealed the said decision to the National Labor Relations Commission. Records showed that prior to the issuance of the Office of the Labor Arbiter's decision, Certain creditors instituted before the Regional Trial Court of Paranaque City a petition for involuntary insolvency against Cards Global. On October 2, 2006, the Regional Trial Court issued an order enjoining Cards Global from disposing its property and from making any payments outside of necessary or legitimate expenses of its business or industry. Cards Global filed before the National Labor Relations Commission its motion to suspend proceedings dated November 2, 2006 and alleged therein its receipt of the Office of the Labor Arbiter's decision on October 27, 2006, as well as its receipt of the order of the Regional Trial Court on October 9, 2006. Cards Global further stated in the said motion that it informed the Regional Trial Court of the pendency of Miguel's labor case. Meanwhile, on November 28, 2008, the National Labor Relations Commission dismissed Cards Global's appeal for non-perfection as the same was filed without the required bond. Cards Global filed a petition for certiorari with the Court of Appeals, which dismissed the same and affirmed the decision of the National Labor Relations Commission. Was the strict adherence to the appeal bond posting requirement correct? The Supreme Court ruled that the appeal bond requirement should have been liberally applied in the present case and that the National Labor Relations Commission, which was mandated to act with justice, reason, and equity, should have allowed the appeal and ruled on the merits considering the circumstances of the case. Specifically, the court found that the employees of Cards Global, including Miguel, had many layers of protection under law despite Cards Global's insolvency proceedings. This is because the rule on a requirement of an appeal bond cannot operate in a vacuum, said the court. When the law does not clearly provide a rule or norm for the tribunal to follow in deciding a question submitted but leaves to the tribunal the discretion to determine the case in one way or another, the judge must decide the question in conformity with justice, reason, and equity in view of the circumstances of the case. The court started by discussing Article 223 of the Labor Code of the Philippines which requires the posting of a cash or surety bond when the judgment appealed from involves a monetary award. The court reiterated prevailing jurisprudence in that the posting of the bond is an indispensable requisite for the perfection of an appeal by the employer. The mandatory nature of the bond is clearly limbed in the provision that an appeal by the employer may be perfected only upon the posting of a cash or surety bond. The court stressed that the word only makes it perfectly clear that the lawmakers intended the posting of a cash or surety bond by the employer to be the exclusive means by which an employer's appeal may be perfected. However, the court also mentioned the following exceptional circumstances under jurisprudence. Number one, the court excused the failure of an appellant to post a bond in view of its counsel's reliance on the notice of the decision in the case which stated the requirements of an appeal without any mention of the appeal bond requirement. The court found that the said counsel, as well as the opposing party, apparently had no knowledge of the amendments caused by Republic Act No. 6715 on the bond requirement, including the issuance of the NLRC interim rules requiring the posting of a bond on appeal. Number 2. An appellant was likewise excused from the requirement when its failure to post a bond was partly caused by the Office of the Labor Arbiter's failure to state the exact amount of monetary award due, which would have been the basis of the amount of the bond to be posted. Number 3. An appeal was given due course despite the failure of the appellant to post a bond on account of its insolvency and poverty. And number 4. The appellant was allowed to post a property bond in lieu of a cash or surety bond. The court found that the assailed judgment involved more than 17 million pesos and its execution could adversely affect the economic survival of the appellant which was a medical center. The court stated that in determining whether to allow a liberal application of the rule on bonds, it is crucial to understand whether employees stand to lose such security provided by the appeal bond, which ensures that when employees prevail, 
they will receive the monetary judgment in their favor. In the present case, the court deemed the existence of the insolvency proceedings as an exceptional circumstance that warranted the liberal application of the rules requiring an appeal bond. Said the court, the failure to file an appeal bond did not contradict the need to ensure that the employee, if his claim is deemed valid, will receive the money judgment. At this point, the court recognized the seeming absence of a rule or norm to follow on the requirement of an appeal bond when the appealing employer is subject of involuntary liquidation proceedings. The court noted that under Article 217 of the Labor Code of the Philippines, money claims arising from an employer-employee relationship may only be filed and ruled upon by the Office of the Labor Arbiter. However, the court also noted that when an employer is undergoing insolvency proceedings, Article 217 of the Labor Code of the Philippines has to be read together with Section 60 of the Insolvency Law or the law in effect when the National Labor Relations Commission dismissed the appeal on November 28, 2008, which states that a creditor may be allowed to proceed with the suit to ascertain the amount due to it but the execution of which shall be stayed. The court discussed that during the pendency of the insolvency proceedings, employees are afforded a measure of protection by having their claim considered as a contingent claim before the insolvent court following Section 55 of the Insolvency Act. The court stated that like any other contingent claim, employees may prosecute their case before the labor tribunals and exhaust other remedies until he or she obtains a final and executory judgment. Assuming the employees obtain a favorable money judgment, the execution will be stayed following Section 60 of the Insolvency Act because the insolvency proceedings is where all creditors of the employer may establish their claims. The court added that assuming the insolvent corporation undergoes liquidation, the measure of protection given to employees is stated in Article 110 of the Labor Code of the Philippines, which prescribes not only the preference for unpaid wages and monetary claims even before the payment of claims of the government and other creditors, but also the only proper venue for the enforcement of such preferential right. In other words, what Article 110 means in the context of an insolvent employer is that during bankruptcy, insolvency or liquidation proceedings involving the existing properties of the employer, the employees have the advantage of having their unpaid wages satisfied ahead of certain claims which may be proved therein. In sum, the court ruled that the employees of an employer who is undergoing insolvency proceedings has many layers of protection starting from being allowed to prosecute his claim, registering a contingent claim before the insolvency court, and finally, enjoying a preference in case the assets of the corporation are ordered liquidated to pay for its debts. Here, the court found that Carch Global informed the National Labor Relations Commission and the Regional Trial Court of the pendency of the insolvency proceedings and of the labor case respectively. The court also noted that even as Carch Global wanted a suspension of the proceedings in the labor case, it still filed a notice of appeal and memorandum of appeal ad cautelam. For the court, the National Labor Relations Commission erred in dismissing the appeal outright especially when the foregoing circumstances reveal that the law itself provides many measures of protection for the employee such that an appeal before the commission may be allowed to proceed despite the lack of an appeal bond.